Welcome back. Glad to have you along tonight. 2012 gets closer each day. The Mayan calendar and 2012. What's the real story? Is it going to be an asteroid, a comet, the 12th planet perhaps? Is it nuclear war? Maybe a catastrophically deadly and virulent pandemic or massive climate change of some kind? Or is E.T. coming back to either eat us all up or take us all away? Or is it just the end of the Mayan stone calendar because the carver died, went on strike perhaps, or maybe he just ran out of stone and rock to decorate? That argument has been put forth as well. People, of course, have been predicting the end of this world of ours for, well, forever with the appearance of each blazing comet and after every eclipse or huge earthquake or tsunami, people say, well, the end is coming. If nothing else, 2012 is surely a golden opportunity for hustlers and opportunistic filmmakers, screenwriters, authors, radio and TV doomsday guests. You'll see it all in the next couple of years and probably get sick of it. Some people already are tired of it, me being one of them. In any case, it won't be too long until we find out what's going to happen. Nobody really knows, apparently. Or maybe someone does. You'll be able to perhaps decide that for yourselves after the next couple of hours. With us this evening is our friend, colleague, and pal, Cliff High, who called me a couple of weeks ago and in a rather stunning conversation told me that he had figured out most of it, and that what he figures is absolutely not good news. So let's welcome back Mr. HalfPastHuman.com and lay out this seven-course meal of what appears to be a very unpleasant 2012 forecast. Good evening, Pie Meister. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. <laughs> No, and I, I didn't discover it all, or, or even most of it. All I've done was add a couple of nice little twists that validate somebody else's discovery. So, well, I didn't sleep for a couple nights, thank you. As I know, I know, and, and uh, I've been very upset for, I was rather intensely upset for that first week, because um, I love mathematics, and mathematics usually, well, has never lied to me, and I do strange things with mathematics that frequently place my life at risk, you know, make domes out of very thin material that technically mathematically should mm -hmm. support my weight and then mm -hmm. going up and see, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I like math, and when the math validated this uh, Patrick Gerald's position on some stuff, and then I was able to add further reinforcement to his already pretty um, rigorous research, it, it uh, made for some uncomfortable sleeping indeed. This uh, fellow Patrick, G-E-R-Y-L, Gerald, girls, yeah, has Carol. been uh, kind of beating the uh, the solar issue for quite some time. Now, y you first became interested in his work how long ago, approximately? And, and how much of it have you been able to go through? And, and what led you to your kind of taking it a step further, if you will? Well, the uh, actually, I, I've only recently discovered his work here, just a couple of weeks ago, really. Um, but uh, some of the stuff that I'd been doing since 1997 that, that actually got me started on my current path was related to the sun and disease and the two words in combination as though the sun were ill showing mm -hmm. up in our data sets way back in 1997 before I had a clue as to what I was looking at. What were the two words again? Sun disease. Sun disease. Right. And sun as in soul, not as in Stanford University Network, for which I was hunting. So, mm -hmm. you know, I abandoned mm -hmm. my my fleeting hope of uh, riches and set about becoming a rather strange fellow out here with, com you know, doing odd things with computers. Mm -hmm. but, but nonetheless, because I've had that in there so long, I've been intrigued by this. And then I ran into the work of uh, Maurice Cottrell, uh, who done, has done a lot of work under the uh, in books that you can read, uh, the Mayan Prophecies and the Tutankhamun Prophecies. Oh, he's been on the program here. He pronounces it, as we both know, Morris, but... Uh, yeah, nonetheless, yes. Yeah. He, he's uh, free to pronounce it any, any, way, any way he wants. But, <laughs> yeah, he, but he's a very bright man and sent me some... Uh, I had some material I haven't even told you about. I, I need to send this to you. I just remember that just now. Anyway, well, go I ahead. have all of his transparencies. And, oh, good. Okay. Yeah, right. and uh, I've done the uh, matching. My issue with his um, work is the same as, uh, as Patrick's, that there's a, num 
number of significant faults in there, and that um, Mr. Cottrell, I believe, is uh, is uh, somewhat short-sighted, simply and is is blinded by a religious perspective. Mm-hmm. And a quick example is that any time he runs across a two-dimensional representation of the Merkaba, which is the intertwined tetrahedrons that is really a symbol for hyperdimensional knowledge, he sees it as the Star of David, and he makes the assumption that oh, this refers to uh, you know, uh, Judaism and Judaism uh-huh. shows up here, and thus this is all pointing mm-hmm. back to uh, you know an, yet another visitation of another Christ figure, Got which it. is all well and good. However, the if you just take it one step further and start looking at some of the other math that's encoded in there, as well as the Merkaba as an actual uh, representation of a hyperdimensional object, you get a different view entirely, mm-hmm. which leads you unfortunately to Patrick Carroll's. A uh, set of assumptions and and conclusions, which are rather nasty for us all, in in a very clear and present danger kind of a way. Right. Tell and, us about who this Geralt is. Now, I, I've heard of him, and and some of the and, and I never had. Either. I found out that the the fellow is a um, unschooled but highly educated individual, mm-hmm. and so I like him. I'm that same way myself. Yeah. And um, his uh, vision is not tainted by any kind of academic leaning. He had made some rather staggering observations uh, around the relativity theory, which turns out to be true. I went and, and actually ran across him because a German friend of mine sent me an, uh, an interview of his that he'd done in German. And uh, I listened to it, and I was very intrigued. So I, I tracked him down and found out he even has some interviews in English, and he's done some written some books in English, mm-hmm. which are quite staggering. And then I go on in and find out that he is also basing his work on Cottrell's findings that take you up to a certain point. And within that work, there's uh, some very specific, cannot be mistaken, mathematic clues. And if anybody really wants to doubt it, they can go and read both uh, Cottrell's Mayan Prophecy and then uh, Gerald's work, and you find that these um, very specific kinds of numbers used and found within the Mayan codices everywhere, and also within Egyptian uh, constructions as well as actual um, uh, hieroglyphs, all point to a certain set of conclusions that are, that are basically uh, uh, unmistakable in terms of if you've ever seen the math before. And you need to get into specifics to understand it, and I get at that point in a little bit. But basically, here's the, um, the reason I was so interested in all of this. The, it's pretty evident now that the whole solar system is involved in some kind of giant upheaval that here on Earth they're trying to sell as global warming, and that basically all of the planets are involved in some form of um, uh, climate uh, crises, if you will. Mm-hmm. We needn't label it any further than that. Since all the planets are involved, we know there's not, or at least we suspect there aren't SUVs trucking around on all the other planets. We know it's not humans that's causing it. Our theories had um, matured over time here because there were more and more words showing up within our data going to the idea of magnetics that had gone bad or gone wonky. And so I came up with the uh, label, the big squeeze, which led led to a postulate that mm-hmm. there was some form of external energy that was causing this big squeeze effect. And that's always been rather troubling because in order to postulate the external energy, you want to have evidence for it. It's not intellectually honest unless you have some reason for thinking that that energy is going to exist. And there are a number of reasons to think that. The alignment Mm -hmm. of the Earth through the sun to the uh, dark rift in the galactic center is going to occur in 2012. Whether that's pertinent or not anymore is probably no longer really the case. Uh, We need not postulate, after reading Daryl's stuff, we need his, his theories as to how all this goes together based on what the Mayans and the Egyptians have encoded in their uh, history that they wanted us to find. Uh, he's, it's no longer necessary to postulate an external to the solar system cause for any of this. So internal to the solar system, not a galactic wave or anything like that. It not, could be indeed that those such things are, are going to occur and are likely to occur. And as can well. Occur, but what we, they needn't be uh, involved at all in what we're facing in 2012. Gotcha and what we've had happen to us three times over the last 40,000 years. Some, uh, something else that's evident, if anybody's ever looked at humanity, is that we're a species that is suffering from a huge amount of amnesia. That, you know, we could not be where we are now if our species had only matured and existed as, you know, near-ape descendants 40, 